From Washington, this is VOA News. Ukraine's president announces high-level changes in government. 16 deaths in Egypt violence on Friday. And stock markets around the world drop. I'm Vincent Bruce reporting from Washington. Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych has agreed to reshuffle his government and amend controversial new anti-protest laws. The concessions were revealed Friday after consultations with religious leaders in the capital. Yanukovych has faced massive anti-government protests in Kiev and regional capitals. He said the changes will be enacted in a special parliamentary session early next week and include amnesties for dozens of jailed activists. News of the presidential concessions appeared to have little outward impact on thousands of protesters who have occupied the city's center for days. They're demanding the resignation of the government. Uh, the government of Prime Minister Mykola Asarov early presidential elections and the lifting of recently imposed restrictions on protests. More details on this story at voanews.com. Explosions and clashes have left 16 people dead in Egypt, including at least six killed in a series of blasts in the Cairo area. The wave of unrest Friday came on the eve of the third anniversary of the uprising that ousted former President Osni Mubarak. There were no immediate, immediate claims of responsibility. White House spokesman Jake Carney said the U.S. condemns the attacks. Regarding the clashes today in Cairo, the United States again urges all sides to condemn and prevent violence. It should be clear to all Egyptian, Egyptians that Violence has not and will not move Egypt's political transition forward. Ongoing unrest and cycles of violence surrounding protests hurt Egypt's prospects for political and economic stability. More at VOANews.com. Representatives from the Syrian government and the Western-backed opposition will hold their first ever joint meeting aimed at resolving nearly three years of civil war. Tomorrow, uh we expect, we have agreed, that uh, we will meet in the same room. Uh, when uh, we started talking about this process, after the Russian and the American meeting in uh, Moscow on the 7th of May, we never uh, considered that this was going to be an easy process. That was United Nations peace mediator Lakhdar Brahimi earlier Friday. He spent the last two days in Switzerland working out direct peace negotiations between the two sides. U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel says the United States is prepared to evacuate American citizens in the event of a terrorist attack at the upcoming Winter Olympic Games in Sochi. The recent string of bombings in Russia is, for U.S. officials, a sign that the threat of an attack of the Olympics is real. The Pentagon has offered to send two U.S. Navy ships to the Black Sea, and U.S. and Russian officials have been in talks that included the possible sharing of U.S. technology on, imp on improvised explosive devices. However, the Russians have yet to accept any offers. Meanwhile, U.S. commanders are making contingency plans to evacuate thousands of Americans in case there is an attack. South Sudanese rebel forces say they were attacked Friday by government forces a day after a ceasefire agreement has been signed. The Airways' Gabe Jossolo has a report. In a statement Friday, rebel military spokesman General Lul Ruai Koang said government forces attacked rebel positions in Unity State, a key oil-producing region, and in Jonglei State, north of the capital. South Sudan's Army spokesman Philip Aguer said he had not heard any reports of fighting. A day earlier, both sides in the conflict signed a ceasefire agreement in Addis Ababa set to take hold Friday evening. Gabe Joslow, VOA News, Nairobi. UN humanitarian Chief Valerie Amos is scheduled to begin a three-day trip to South Sudan Monday. Thailand's Constitutional Court says the Election Commission has the power to postpone the election scheduled for February 2nd and has called for talks between the Commission and Prime Minister Yingluck Shinwat.
Ron Corbin has a report. The eight sitting judges from the Constitutional Court Friday backed the Election Commission's authority to call for a delay in the February 2 elections. The Commission had been seeking a court ruling on the extent of its powers to make decisions on the future of the poll, in light of protests in Bangkok over the past three months. Legal experts say under Thailand's constitution, the five-member election commission has the power to postpone the vote. The commission had been seeking government support to delay the polls. The constitutional court said the commission and Prime Minister Ying Lak Shinawat should hold talks on any new polling date. Ron Corbin, Bangkok, Thailand. World stock markets plunged Friday as investors worried about a possible slowdown in emerging markets. I'm Vincent Bruce, VOA News.